Don't be scared. I know I look like a zombie. It's actually an iron deficiency. <laughs> I was in a meeting uh, last week with a colleague. We'll call him Dave. Dave was really upset. He'd just come out of a really ugly relationship. They were both really ugly. <laughs> and to try and cheer him up, I said, come on, Dave, let's focus on our project. We need to have a brainstorming session. And he went, Ben, you can't say that anymore. It's offensive to epileptics. Can't say brainstorming. You've got to say idea shower instead. <laughs> so that doesn't really work for me, that Dave. It doesn't sound right asking someone to go for an idea shower. I mean, would you want to go for an idea shower with me? <laughs> so I said, all right, I'll get on board with this, Dave. Let's go for an idea shower. Let's get our ideas on this whiteboard. You can't say that, Ben. It's offensive saying whiteboard. You've got to say whiteboard instead. Okay, so we'll get our idea showers on a whiteboard then, Dave. Because he was so sad, I said, come on, Dave, let me set you up on a blind date. I said, Ben, you can't say blind date anymore. You've got to say visually impaired date. <laughs> I'll set you up on a visually impaired date then, Dave. But I don't like dogs, said Dave. Well, she's not got a dog. Well, if she's visually impaired, she's going to have a dog. But she's not visually impaired, Dave. I was trying to set you up on a blind date. You just can't help some, can you? Anyone stay up till four o'clock watching Game of Thrones? I did. What a disappointment. Still not finished. Teresa's still on the throne. Boris wants to be there. <laughs> Some guy called Nigel's disrupting everything. Tommy Robinson doesn't like milkshakes thrown on him. <laughs> I thought it was ending at the end of October, but wasn't worth staying up for. Uh, before I start, uh, it's 2019. There's no room for sexist comments anymore. No one agrees? Okay, interesting. And I was sat on a bench the other day and a little child ran past and I heard a woman's voice shout, Tyler! Tyler! Now, if you're going to call your kid Tyler, he'll grow up to be a dick. <laughs> and then the woman turned to what I believe was a friend or a family member and went, oh, is he typical male? He's not deaf. He just doesn't... <laughs> Sorry, I'm not sure how that ended. I told my parents I was on at the Hot Water Comedy Club tonight. They said, well done, son, but we've got a couple of pieces of advice for you. The first piece of advice is we paid for you to go to university and get a psychology degree. You haven't really done anything with it, so why don't you start using it? So, ladies and gentlemen, this will be the worst ten minutes of comedy you'll see in your life. Second piece of advice was it's 2019. You need to be politically correct. Don't go upsetting anyone. So just as a reminder, this is a comedy show tonight. Anything I say tonight is surely just for jest. Don't take things seriously. One of the weirdest questions I've ever been asked over the years as a psychology graduate is, take any serial killer and put them on a modern-day TV show. So I went for Fred and Rose West on Grand Designs. <laughs> Tonight's episode, Kevin's in Gloucester. <laughs> He's come to meet the West family. Rose is hard-working. She's self-employed. But because she's really been putting the hours in, she's got a really bad back. Fred doesn't really do much, but he's a keen cameraman. So we're going to build him his own video room overlooking Rose's office. A few months go by, Kevin goes back to see how the project's going. He says the house is coming along well. Are you sticking to your budget? No, Kevin. We've gone over our budget. 
well, what have you done? Let's just say we've got a few bodies in to help with the wall cavities. <laughs> well, the house looks great. What have you done with the basement? Don't go in the basement, Kevin. <laughs> I thought you were building a feature garden, but you seem to have put a patio down. <laughs> Don't go in the garden, Kevin. <laughs> Horrible people, aren't they, the Wests? As a child, I used to walk through puddles because I was worried that my feet would get thirsty. <laughs> in 2019, I'd be classed as having additional needs. I found out I was gay when I was nine. A school friend told me I dropped my gay card. And I looked. Can't really say gay card in 2019. But if it did exist, you'd probably get bonus points shopping. When I first heard Material Girl by Madonna, I thought that she was singing that she's made out of material. A duvet, for example. Didn't realize materialism was buying kids. Too soon? <laughs> Listen. That's what she said. He's not deaf, he just doesn't listen. <laughs> I get it now, it was sexist. With it being 2019, we've had a lot of kids born in the family recently, and they're at age where they like to have bedtime stories read to them. Now, I don't know if you've looked at bedtime stories recently, but they're not really fit for purpose. So tonight I'm going to go through the Goldilocks and the Three Bears 2019 version. I hope you've heard the original. Goldilocks was gender neutral. <laughs> Goldilocks went for a walk in the forest and came upon a house. And when she knocked on the door, nobody answered, so she walked right in. As she went into the house, she came across a table with three bowls on it. She touched her first bowl. Ah, this is so hot, she said. There's no warning label. I'm going to sue. <laughs> she touched her second bowl, and it was too cold. She touched her third bowl, and it was just right. Goldilocks started to tuck into it. As she had a few mouthfuls, she spat it out. Oh, this isn't vegan. <laughs> it's going to wreak havoc with my lactose intolerance. Goldilocks' tummy began to hurt. She went into the next room where there were three chairs. The first chair was too big. The second chair was too big. The third chair was just right. And as Goldilocks sat into it, it broke into tiny pieces. Goldilocks felt body shamed. <laughs> Her tummy was really hurting, so she went upstairs where she found a bedroom with three beds in it. She thought, three beds in one room? That's a bit weird. I hope it's not for Fritzel's house. <laughs> Be careful with your drink. <laughs> she tried the first bed and it was too hard. She tried the second bed, it was too soft. She tried the third bed, it was just right. Goldilocks fell asleep. Meanwhile, three bears are walking through a sustainable forest. There's Mama Bear, Baby Bear and Papa Bear. I do have to apologise, it is a heterosexual marriage. Mama Bear and Baby Papa Bear were arguing a lot. The reason why they were arguing so much, Papa Bear had just lost his job, got caught sleeping with his secretary. <laughs> they came to the house and saw the door was open. Mama Bear went, oh, typical. Couldn't shut the door just like when you got caught sleeping with your secretary. <laughs> Papa Bear went, leave it. Before I leave you. I've apologised, I lost my job, we've had to downsize, please just let it go. They went into the kitchen and saw that the porridge had been eaten. Mama Bear went, great, now we're going to have to eat out of food banks because our universal credit's been cut off. <laughs> Papa Bear went, just let it go. They saw that the chair was broken and then they went upstairs where Goldilocks was in the bed. Mama Bear went, typical, couldn't just sleep her in the office, could you? You had to bring her back here as well. <laughs> Papa Bear said, let it go before I kill you. <laughs> Meanwhile, Goldilocks woke up, was frightened when she saw the bears and ran off into the forest where Joseph Fritzl was waiting in a transit van. <laughs> Just before I leave you, another weird question I've been asked over the years is, take any child abduction, put that on a modern day TV show. So I went for Shannon Matthews on Cash in the Attic. <laughs> My name's Ben Lund, thank you for your time. <laughs> 